Hello and happy new year, everybody. But first, we have a public uh, public service announcement for you. Uh, actually, it's a public health announcement. Move back from your screen. Yes, you guys watching right now, move back from your screen because Jennifer has COVID. <laughs> she does. I, I tested positive on the 30th. So Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Uh, she tested positive and uh, we th we, now we are both fully vaccinated and boosted. So um, what you have the, the, is, is mild, right? I guess. How would you describe your symptoms? Well, sore throat, cough, sore headache, throat, cough, upset stomach, stuffy nose. Yeah. Stuffy nose. Tired. Tired. But I feel very fortunate that I don't have what everybody had in the beginning. So we think this is that probably that Omicron uh, don't know variant, but um, yes, we are we're next. But we do you can't see it. We have a we yeah, <laughs> we, yeah we have a we are actually going to put her upstairs and have her come out on a different camera. But that's but, a lot of work. But, but yeah, well, and we not, figure he's doomed. I'm he either gave it to me or else I'm going to give it to him. What do you mean I gave it to you? Well, I don't have it. I tested negative the well, same day. So I, can't, I, I don't think that I, think I get blamed a, for everything. I think folks. you need a separate test to see if you've had it. Well, we do think that I had it on Christmas Eve. I was extremely fatigued, but that was the only symptom I had. Right. I, I think I had a slight sore throat, right. maybe, right. but I, not enough to complain much about. And then the next day I was fine. So, and when I got a little bit stuffy, I didn't think anything of it because a couple of our loved ones that came on Christmas Eve had colds and they had been tested for COVID and they didn't have COVID. So I didn't think I had COVID, but you insisted that I get tested. And it was, it was a real process to get tested. There's a shortage of tests crazy. and you yeah. spent a lot of time taking care of me. And then you spent a whole bunch of money getting that test. Yeah. We, we had to pay super extra to get it, but the point is same day we, results. But uh, so she tested positive Thursday and um, I think you've gotten a, a little bit and she did have the monoclonal uh, clodial, um Fusion. Uh, infusion antibodies. Mm -hmm. uh, I had that on Friday. She's on hydroxychloroquine and erythromycin mm -hmm. and a million vitamins. Uh, we've both been taking lots of vitamins for, you know, the last year. I've been really loading up on, you know, all the stuff everybody tells yeah, you. Yeah, he's been very conscientious about the vitamins and I was not. So I either already had it or I'm going to get it. Because <laughs> this is supposed to be pretty contagious. I mean... I mean, you say we're bad that we're by each other, but I was by them when uh, I didn't know I had it. And you're contagious two days before you show any symptoms. Just like any cold or virus, you're contagious. I always heard three days before you show any signs. And then the first three days, you are particularly contagious. So so, so would you say this is kind of like a cold? Yeah, I guess it is like a cold. You've had worse colds. I know that. Yeah, but I mean, I feel very grateful that I'm not you know, yep. on a ventilator or something. Hopefully I won't go on one. So we're doing uh, all the vitamin regimens that everybody keeps hearing about. I see people like uh, Chuck is putting stuff on there. And yes, we, we're on all of that stuff and, uh, and many others. So, um, so that's, uh, that's the latest for us. Now the, the announcement we want to make about that is we think that, uh, you know, we're supposed to be up camping Thursday night yeah, in the upper peninsula of Michigan for our winter camp out. we got about 50 people coming. And I told that group that we were going to make a decision this weekend. We're still going to keep things fluid for a day or well, two. We were advised by a doctor. Probably not, not to, go. to go. We were advised by my daughter by logic <laughs> packing how yeah. much work that is. And I really want to get better. I, I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't want this to turn into something really serious. I, I want to do everything I can to help it go away. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, so at any rate. Um, you know, you don't know what to expect. Yep. Um, one thing I see on the comments, keep your opinions to yourself. Okay. And don't be prescribing things and making blanket statements because somebody's going to argue with you who believes differently, you know? So let's just keep this civil. Uh, don't say that. Uh, 
don't try and turn this into a political thing or Chris and Phyllis are going to zap you right out of here. Phyllis will be so busy. Yeah. I hope you guys are busy. Wait a minute. I better just, if Chris Collie over on YouTube, (laughs) same thing. Anybody gets political and starts telling their opinion, kick them out. I mean, tell us you too. Will you? <laughs> I mean, well, we're open to can of worms because I got COVID. I have right. no idea where I picked it up. Yeah. You know, I have no idea. And the issue right. is uh, it could be a lot worse. And, and I'm uh, very grateful. And we're going to get better. I'm so I'm very grateful. So you guys in the bad. chat, behave yourself. And, quit, quit being And I'm the puny one of the two of us. So yep. hopefully you'll hang in there. Yep. So back back to the the Yeah, the, now we uh, got to get back to work. We so probably because I'm tired or I'm going to cough. We probably are going to uh, skip the uh, winter camp out because uh, even if Jen, uh, she, technically she should CDC says she should be better in a day or two, but uh, I'm getting tested again tomorrow, which will only and that's going to take a couple of days for for that test. So I'll know Wednesday Thursday whether I was positive tomorrow. We just think it makes sense just to let it I am really, really bit. sad because I love that trip. That is my favorite trip. And it's people that I only see that once a year. And I was looking forward to meeting other people. And we had lots of people coming that we were excited about. But I really don't think it's smart to go. So we probably will go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We probably I, I really don't think it's yeah. smart to go. I think right I now, need to let this body heal. You can all weigh in on that one if you want. But we think we probably. Yeah, and some of you have gone through and have what Jen has, says. So maybe we'll. And we'll I don't wait. know how long it took all of you to get better. But, you know, we're all different. Yeah. You know, we've all got our all right. little. Course. So so that was the big news. Now yeah. you can come closer to the thing. Uh, a couple of other quick uh, things. We've got two big announcements. And here we go. This first one, we really need a drum roll. That's not a very good drum roll. No, that's not a very good drum roll. I don't, do I have any sound effects that'll do? Okay. You can read it. Okay. You can read it. We have a brand new book that we just published, and we are really excited about it. It is our ultimate guide to finding free or very cheap RV sites. And um, we are releasing it. There's the, the thing. It's just, it's just like our other books. It's the same basic format. Uh, it's a little shorter it's because we, we have gone you know straight to the point. Lots of resources, lots of links, how you can find places to camp. So much better than pr- crowded, pricey campgrounds. We're really excited about this. Uh, seven bucks, instant download. It's an ebook. You could print it out yourself if you want, but it's an ebook. Uh, and it's available. It's our first publication of the year. Joins our growing library. I think we got a dozen, even more than that, books in the library now. And this just came out. You're the first people to really officially know about it. And that's how you can find it. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash free camp. And uh, I think that's the correct URL. Got a, My camera's in the way here. <laughs> free camping. And uh, you can find it there. So go to that uh, address. Um, and um, we're really excited about that. Second of all, uh, second big announcement, we have another contest, another giveaway. And this is really exciting. You know, we do these sweepstakes uh, usually a couple times a month. They last two weeks. New one starts tonight. And we're giving away, uh, it's one of a repeat, uh, one of the bigger ones that we did last year that everybody really yes, liked. Yes, because everybody was so excited about it, decided to do it again. There's going to be one waggle pet monitor worth $199 to keep track of the temperature inside your RV. And this is a little device, plugs into uh, your uh, an electrical outlet, transmits over the internet to your smartphone, tells you what the temperature is inside. And then the second one is gonna be a waggle cam worth 199 that shows you a video feed of the RV. You can even push a button on your smartphone and toss some treats. We did that with Bo. There's a video on, on our YouTube channel. Bo doesn't that. catch. These are great prizes. If you travel with the pet, the big worry you have when you leave the pet in the RV and you go out in the summertime as it gets, the air conditioner goes out, it gets too hot. This will send you an alert. It's just so nice. That's the uh, the monitor. And of course the camera is great because you can call it up and you can see what your dog is uh, is doing and uh, or your cat, whatever it is. Anyway, we're giving away, go to that address. You can enter as many times as you want. And uh, for the duration of this giveaway, which is two weeks, the folks at Waggle Cam uh, will sell you, if you want to just get one, half price. Not, not. I mean, half price, 50% off, but you got to go to the special URL that's in that uh, address. Go there. It'll tell you all about it. And we'll announce the winner of the Waggle Cam and the uh, monitor 
uh, two weeks from tonight. So there, uh, we'll good. try and remember this uh, again before we go off. Tonight is the finale of Yellowstone, eight o'clock. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to watch it <laughs> because somebody's going to die. <laughs> you know, it's always tough. Uh, I see one question I want to get because I mentioned it. Uh, as Shirley says, uh, where is it? Are you going to the Tampa show? At this point? At this point, we plan on, but everything's a big variable. I have to get healthy and you have to stay healthy. I think I'm going to be okay. Um, that's January 19th through the 23rd, actually. And we have a meetup on the 20th. So we think that even were I to, to test positive tomorrow, um, I should, should we be We plan over on that. going, but you know, this thing, you don't yeah. know where it's going to go. We had planned on being there uh, up in the UP this weekend. We still might go. We'll see how it goes, but it doesn't look like the UP. I don't think that would be smart of me to but, do that, uh, but I want to go. But we think we will be going to Tampa. Bo wants to go. He doesn't want to go to Bo's Tampa. Gonna be, no, he doesn't want to go to Tampa. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get on to some of the qu other questions that you have. Linda Ward, who got a new RV a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I'm going to have to move your, my screen so I can read it. Okay. Got the camera in front there we of go. <laughs> and as you know, Linda's from Robbinsville, New Jersey. And thank you, Linda, for hoping that I'm feeling better. Question, when you are hanging out in your RV in the driveway in winter, do you use a propane furnace or a ceramic heater? We use our ceramic heater because why use up our propane? If Because we're plugged in. So we use the electricity and our little heater just heats that thing up just terrific. It really does do a great job. Um, yeah. There's a link to it in our gear page, which is slash gear We've had this thing for how many years? Years. 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 And uh, it's not that much, but it really does a nice job. And when we camp in the in, out winter camping with it, we like to use it if we have a hookup because it takes a lot of electric uh, right. power. Uh, won't run on our lithium batteries. We would have been using it at Taquamden Falls. Yeah, we would because they have hookups there. Yeah, right. Electric it, hookups. It really. And Supplements why, the propane. Why use up your propane? And also our propane, our heat goes blasts right out where Bo sleeps. And then that makes for a very unhappy elk hound. And he wants to sleep in our beds there. And it gets really no sleep for anybody. Yep. So we try to use our ceramic heater up high. Hey, I don't, nobody's commenting on the sound. Let me just uh, show you a couple of things. We have a new microphone. So I'm anxious to see what you all think uh, about the sound. You can, I'll look at the comments afterwards, but here this is our new microphone. This is a new Sennheiser boom microphone. And there's a million booms. This one is the most I've ever spent for a microphone. It's I don't even know if I want to ask. Don't ask. Should we have a no. sale for all no. the microphones we have? I have a case full of microphones. I know. So, but this, uh, this microphone is what they use for sound in the movies. They have a bigger case that goes on it. You know, a real big case for the movies. But we don't need that here. Uh, we might. So, no. Uh, yeah, so you can hit me over the head with it when you find out <laughs> how much it costs. But I'm hoping that's that sounds pretty good because that's our new microphone. And the uh, the other question is Phyllis Whoop. suggested – Jennifer lost her ear, please. Um, oh, Phyllis suggested that uh, that uh, we maybe do a, a list of all the podcasting equipment we have. You know, we've got things like uh, – I don't know if you can see where those lights are. That's our – ATEM Mini Pro and the computers and the monitors we use. And uh, I don't have anything more I can show over there. Um, and if you all think that I should do a post on that or a, uh, a link to all the equipment that we have, we finally have everything set up. I think you're pretty good. Well, it could probably help out those just starting out. Yeah, yeah. If you want to take over from us someday, <laughs> the competition. Yeah, that doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> Never mind that. Just scratch it. All right, back to questions. I see people are saying it sounds good and I hope it does. Eric Miller. Hi, Eric. Slanted driveway is really making leveling difficult. How level does it need to be to start re the refrigerator? And really don't like seeing front wheels dangling off the pavement. Pavement. I wouldn't like that either, leaving that in my driveway with the front wheels off the pavement. I wouldn't think you should do that. Now, if you're doing it just for a few minutes, you know, maybe it's minutes? a low to get the refrigerator or maybe overnight or something, you're probably okay. They, I don't know what kind of an RV you have, Eric, but they've told us on Sprinters and even now on the Ford Transit chassis that we have for our RV that it doesn't hurt it. It just looks bad. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't seem right. What if you get some Legos or something, some of the or big strips of wood so that you could drive it up on? I mean, if it's 
that kind of a Yeah, spot. if you can get it up a little high, it, it doesn't have to be perfectly level. But, but yeah. if it's like if it's like that or like that, yeah, uh, the refrigerator doesn't like it. Um, but it will let you, you know, get it started, get it cold, but try and get it as level as you can. And uh, slanted driveways are are an issue. It's hard. It's real hard. Yep. Linda Barkum. Happy New Year. Heading to Florida next Friday for three months camping all over the state. That sounds absolutely wonderful. It does. Um, got your reservations made or you're just going to wing you, it? Yeah. Hope you got reservations. It's hard. Uh, our podcast will talk about uh, really straight talk. We're going to give you about camping this year. And uh, I don't know if the industry is going to like what I say because the industry, you know, they don't want you to tell anything like it really is. But we're going to talk straight about it. And one of the things we're going to talk about is why you have to have reservations or go get our book about finding free spots and learn how to boondock. And, and you can try all that, that stuff too. Chris Allen, uh, Happy New Year. Hi to you, Chris. Thank you very much for those comments. It's great to see. Marlene Stein. Snowy Idaho. Oh, Bo is jealous. We were supposed to get six inches of snow and we got what, three? Three or four. We yeah. took, I took him to the dog park this morning and he was very happy rolling around in the snow with his oh, buddies. Yes. Yep. Jackie Wer Werndal. All Werndley. Right. Happy New Year's from Florida. Spent part of my day researching for an upcoming trip to the Great Lakes and Canada. I hope you have a wonderful time. I hope you luck out in all just the right places that are perfect for you. And Jackie, we've got a couple of books on the Great Lakes, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. we got a Great Lakes Shoreline Guide. Uh, check all those out as well if you're uh, doing your research because there's so much to see. The Great Lakes Shoreline uh, talks about following all along. You never, uh, you know, lighthouses. A lot of people really are into lighthouses. You want me to do a book on lighthouses? Uh -huh. You just want to go visit lighthouses <laughs> in research, sure. right? Yeah. Well, maybe sure. we will. We have a friend who worked at one. Yeah. Um, from Facebook, a Facebook user. Hey, Facebook users, when you uh, log on, it ask you if they can use your name and all that stuff. If you say yes, then I'll be able to address. We can we can call you by name and stuff other than Facebook user. <laughs> but Okay. So this is your question. When boondocking on a typical night, how much of your battery gets used, assuming it's 100% charged at the start? Yeah, whatever is it at the they know what the SOC and that is the state of charge. Um, probably when we do it, when we first started off, probably 50 percent now, maybe 70 percent, you know, because we don't really use much at all. Uh, you know, I run a CPAP machine. And that, that gobbles up a lot of stuff. I'm trying to figure out how to, I, I know how to do it. I just have to make the time to get, I'm going to run that off 12 volts or pick up a, another a battery for it system. Some people use uh, one of those little Jackery power supplies. I may get one of those. Um, I never really run out with it, so it's not a problem. But uh, we can usually get, uh, we usually about 70%, maybe 80, because uh, we don't really run anything. But the only thing running off of, um, you know, AC power is uh, my uh, cell phone um, router, you know, my, my internet router, which doesn't take much at all. And I might be charging a battery. And I've got a bigger laptop, so it's, I think it's a 90 watt uh, uh, charger now. So that uses a little bit more, but 70 to 80%, which always gets replenished just with solar the next day, assuming the sun shines, <laughs> which in Michigan is, is not a given. No. Neil Curran. Uh, wondering about the climb up the mountain. Can a 45 footer get up there and be able to turn around or get back down easily? Neil, where is there? The mountain. I wonder what, what mountain? mountain. I don't know. I don't know which mountain uh, and, and where you're talking about, Neil. So I wonder Pike's Peak? I don't, I mean, know. I don't know. No, you don't take a 40 footer. Up on. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out no, what, what we're talking. Uh, oh, just any. I don't know. It depends on how. He's big talking the about us, and he's talking about turn around, and get back down. So I don't know what mountain it is. Yeah, don't know. post it and and yeah. uh, and and Phyllis will get that back up for you. So I'll know okay. what you're talking. About. James Massey, one of our friends from our meetup on the Mississippi a couple months ago. Yeah, uh, you're getting a compliment about your cell booster article, and. Uh, even when Starlink is available, do you uh, believe the need for boosters will persist for voice calls? James, I don't use a booster now. And I don't, I, I, I stopped using a booster a, a little over a year ago. 
and have not regretted that decision at all. Uh, the cell phone networks of everybody have built out so well that, that it's very rare that I'm someplace where I can't get a signal that a booster would, would, uh, would help me get over the edge. Um, it has happened a couple of times in the past year, but nothing critical and uh, only for an hour or two or, or maybe overnight, you know, and I sleep in overnight, so it doesn't bother me. Uh, so I don't think boosters are really that necessary now, unless you're going to a place where for most of the time you have no connectivity and you have to have it. Um, if you read and watch our stuff, I have ham radio communications equipment, which will always get me through in an emergency someplace. Um, so I'm not, I'm not as paranoid about having connectivity if I'm, if I'm camped someplace for just the night and I don't have it, but it's so rare that that happens that uh, I just don't think I, I need the hassle of running the wires and fixing it and making it look good and putting the booster in. When Starlink, the communication system that Elon Musk is working on, uh, you know, that is the low orbiting Earth satellites mm -hmm. with this broadband, faster than broadband speeds. Uh, I had hoped that we would see mobile tests in vehicles like RVs by the end of uh, 2021. We didn't. I'm now hoping we'll see them by the end of 2022. Um, I think uh, we're getting close, but that's still a couple of years away before it's readily available and the bugs are worked out. So long story short, you don't need a booster. I don't think, uh, unless you're in really remote areas all the time. Hope that answered it, James. Ali Palazzi. Okay. How can I find a smaller drivable RV for myself? And what's the best engine? Ali, that's like asking me, what's the best car to get? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know you or your tastes. Uh, a smaller I can say drivable RV. You probably would want, uh, so you want a motor home, a drivable RV. Uh, I think one of the short sprinters or the Ford Transit, the shorter Ford Transit chassis that are 19 feet long. That's that's uh, that's good. If it's just for yourself, uh, look for something. They call it the short sprinter, 19 foot, or the, um, the shorter uh, um, Ford Transit chassis. And there's also the Dodge Ram chassis. So... It's the chassis is what the motorhomes are built on. And that's really what you want to find. All those are very drivable and 19 feet is not that much bigger than, than a car, a, a big, a full size car or, or a pickup, a small pickup. So, um, so that, that's as close as I can get and you. Then it depends on if you want to get a used one or if you're going to get a new one. In a yeah. Way. Yes. For the best engine. If I was to pick one, I would say get a the Ford. I'd say get the, the, uh, the sprinter, the 19 foot sprinter. Uh, I think those are 2,500 engines. Um, the 3,500, I think, is what they have for the bigger ones. Um, Sprinter engines, uh, diesel engines last forever, forever. Um, Ford's uh, Transit makes a good engine. Of course, Dodge Ram, they, they're great. So I uh, can't help you much more than that. It's all very generic, and it depends on what you like and what you're How much money you have, how much you're willing to spend. Yep. When you get when you get it narrowed down, come back and we'll we'll do our I best. I think to it's help. safe to say that a sprinter is more expensive to service mm -hmm. it. I mean, yes, it's a workhorse, it's reliable, you know. Yeah, but it's 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 very, very reliable. Yes. Sandra Troher. Troller. Have you heard of any rear uh what is this? Uh rear twin bed uh, I think she means rear TV, she means T V, the wonder. Available for rent? No, no, I haven't. Uh, you know, uh, it's part of what we're going to talk about in the podcast. Uh, there are very few RVs available, new ones, uh, motorhomes. You can find a lot of new fifth wheels, a lot of new towable trailers, but finding uh, particularly Class B and Class C new motorhomes, there are they are very hard to come by, and they're very hard to rent too. I think it's the same thing with homes. Home sells so quick. You don't yeah. have time to think about it to try to rent a place. I mean, rent like doubles. Yeah. The rent well, cars. Many of you know, that, you know, we just bought some land in Tennessee that we're turning into kind of our own private little RV uh, retreat. We've been looking also for land in other places and it's really hard to find. 
We've got a couple places we're looking at, so stay tuned this year. Yeah. Because we are going that to buy some more. Part we know, of our we, we going kind north, of, and now I can't go north, yeah, I don't think. I'm not going to tell anybody where. Don't, okay. I have been saying Michigan, but we're not going to say Michigan okay. anymore because we don't want any more competition. Yeah, we don't want any more competition. But we have plans. I've got a good, relevant yeah. question here. Ivan Josie RV Journey. Uh, we are wanting to invest in a property and would like to understand the difference between the actual property you purchased and the one you initially announced. What's he talking about? The one we initially announced was on that river. and Oh, that was a story about a different development. Yeah. yeah we don't announce. I mean, it's a story. But it's, it was a story that we first did. Yes, that's what got us thinking about it, actually. That, yeah. Well, that was, uh, and that's, we're going to probably go back and revisit that, yeah, too. Yeah, we kind of. We still, that's also in Tennessee. Yeah, and it's a beautiful view. I mean, on the you're Kentucky lined up River, in Kentucky a row, Lake, Kentucky Lake, and you don't have the big trees that you would like for privacy because you are on a floodplain. And uh, what once a year it floods a little bit. Well, the Tennessee River is run by the Tennessee Valley Authority, right? It's an ab <gasps> it's part of the Great Loop. Bo says he <gasps> wants to go see it. Uh, it's part of danger. the Great Loop. You can put a boat in there and literally go anywhere. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of, uh, of, of waterfront. You buy a lot, an oversized lot. It's not acreage, but it's a big lot. And uh, Whoa. <laughs> sorry about the dog, folks. This is live. Uh, you buy the lot and uh, it's, it's yours, but you can't build anything permanent on it because it's like an easement that the Tennessee River gives you deeded title to. But because they administer it, that they, you know, they control the water levels on the Tennessee River. So, you know, every year or so, there's a, a, a little bit of a flood. It's usually in February and water comes over the bank. So, you know, um, you don't want your RV there at that time. They tell you it's all announced. It's all planned. Um, so that's, that's uh, and that's a place that would be really fun in the summertime. And we really think it looks pretty cool. The place that we're in is uh, a number of miles from there. It's on top of a mountain, and there are large, multi-acre sites. Frankly, I don't know if they even have any lots left. I think there's some, but not many. Uh -huh. I mean, they have so – I've heard from – I don't know how many people who've bought. Uh, so there are lots that we bought are in a development that are from 5 to 100-plus acres. And uh, you can do whatever you want with them. That's just raw land. Uh, you can build on it. No time limit when you have to build. You can put RVs. We're going to put three RV sites on ours. We have a five-acre plot. Uh, so I hope that answered your question. Completely different development, different different thing. Ours is where you can put something permanent. The other place isn't permanent. Uh, you move your RV out in the uh, you know when you're not there, and there's, they have storage on site. And I think the storage. first one. It would be very easy to rent out the sites. Because it's like a resort. Because you've got a slab of cement. and You put a big roof over they it. They put a roof over it. Yeah. And it's a pretty view just to sit there and look at the river. Yeah, really neat. So but different, completely different uh, yeah. locations. Jody Skurut. Uh, are the Grand Design Solitude a good fifth wheel to purchase? Uh, we haven't bought one, but uh, they're really nice. Um their, their grand design is just a great reputation. They're very popular fifth wheel. Um, so I, I mean, on general purposes, I'd say yes. We'll, we hope to visit a couple of, uh, of their newer models uh, that I think they'll be showing in Tampa this year. But yeah, they're, they're a great, uh, they're a great fifth wheel, very popular. Uh, we have not owned a fifth wheel. It's, uh, you know, we're not, we, we don't think we want a towable. Although we're thinking that the next RV we get, we do want to tow something with it, a small car, right? I, I would like that. Yeah. I don't know when we're going to get a new RV because it's pretty hard to get, but stay tuned. Robin G. All right. Can we get tips for winterizing our new camper van? Do it. <laughs> we live in the South and we'll be going to Colorado for a week in February. Uh, yeah, do it, you know, just before you leave, or the day you leave even, uh, you know, it's pretty simple. I don't know what kind of a uh, RV you have. It's, it's a camper van. You look in the manual. They'll give you every place is different because you got to turn the right valves. Uh, it's it's very simple to do. Um, I've got I've got a whole playlist on winterizing your RV on YouTube. If uh, if you're watching on YouTube, which I, you are, Robin, 
Uh, I'm sure Chris will put a link to that uh, playlist up uh, in the chat room there and you can click on that, but it's very easy to do. It'll take you an hour tops. And that's with you looking in the manual because you've never done it before. And then when you come back into Florida, whoo out of the cold, it takes you a little less than that to dewinterize. So, And if you're comfortable doing that, I'm sure you won't have any problem whatsoever with that sort of thing. And if you're not comfortable, take it to an RV dealer, take yeah. it to a dealer and ask them to do it. Cause it isn't worth yeah. what might happen. It costs a hundred bucks, a hundred and a quarter, maybe tops. And, and uh, hopefully they have anyways, they'll do it for you and you don't have to worry about it. Have a cup of coffee and it'll be done. And I hope you just have the best time in Colorado for a week in February. That sounds like snow. Yeah, yeah, lots of snow. They had a big good. They, they have had delayed snow. They got it last night. Fortunately, it, yesterday it, it quenched those horrible fires up by Boulder. James Moorhead. All right, we have experience in Bs and B pluses. We uh, purchased the Bs so that we could camp or fit in a hotel parking lot. Thoughts on seeing the country if you don't enjoy camping every night. That's what that's that's the beauty of this RV lifestyle, and particularly of traveling in the B, James. Yeah, it's it's great, and uh, you don't have you to don't sleep in it. <laughs> parking in that uh, hotel parking lot. I don't know if you're mooch docking or if you're letting them know that you're parking in their parking lot because when we would we would go in and they didn't have any rooms. It's like, is it okay if we park in your parking lot for the night since you don't have any rooms? It helps if you are a member of their. Uh, their clubs, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we've done that a number of time at Holiday Inn Expresses. If they were filled up, I said, hey, look, we can stay in our RV. I'm a member. Here it is. Oh, yeah, no problem. And I got to tell you, somebody had to give me permission when we first started uh, camping in RV. And they told me that about every third night they get a hotel room. Mm -hmm. and we did that the first year, frankly. Well, it well, was I just don't like, think it's quite that no, often, but a we, lot. We camped all the time because I thought we got this beautiful rig. We got all this money that we spent for this thing. We're staying in it. I guess I'm just a dutiful person because it helped me say, oh, it's okay if if we get a room. Yeah. And now I, I prefer our van. I prefer ours rather than, it seems like these days you don't know the cleanliness of places that mm. you used to take it for granted that they were clean. And oh, and then how can I forget when you have a dog ah. and you have to get the room that they let people with dogs stay in. Mm. I have allergies and lots of times those rooms, they're awful. So I like our, I like our place, our clean. And it seems like we're always running in and out. We need a better system. For but, sure and things. but if you, you know, don't let people guilt you. Yeah. It's really great to travel in a, in a camper van, a class B you've got, uh, you know, a bathroom, you got a kitchen, you got your refrigerator, you got all your food, all your clothes, everything is set up in there, lots of room. You can take a nap in a rest area, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, and then if you're happy with uh, staying in a uh, uh, in a hotel, uh, uh, go for it, enjoy it. Um, it's your lifestyle and you can make it work for you however you like. Pat Rolinski. Do you know how much snow is safe for the roof of your RV, how much snow do you think can go up there? I, I suppose how many inches? How heavy is it? Well, it depends on how wet it is. Yeah, uh, I've only in and we live in <laughs> Michigan. I think I've only pushed the snow off the roof twice, maybe in eleven years. Now, granted, in a week or so, assuming we stay, uh -huh. you get better, and I don't get it. Um, we're going to be in Florida, and we'll probably stay down there for most of the next several months. But um, we've had big snows and I've turned, pushed it off when it gets over a foot, you know, and, and I do that. I try and get the snow off uh, before I take off. If there's a lot of snow on the roof, because, you know, when you drive, it all blows back. And you're up the, high enough that uh, it could be a hazard. Yeah. And if it's sat there for a while, it kind of freezes and yeah. chunks. And Double I don't want to jump in on other cars and the thing. So I do try and get it off that way. But to just go out in the driveway and push the snow off the roof. I wait, you know, if it's a, if it's getting close to a foot, I take it off. If I had a, a bigger RV than our uh, 25 foot class C, I, I would probably take more, you know, cause that's more of a load, the bigger the roof is, but I'd say a foot, you know, eight inches a foot. Shirley, Shirley, Shirley. Hi, Shirley. 
Okay, let's see. Want me to meet you at the, what is this? Home, home of Sassafla, that's where she lives. <laughs> She's offered to, to babysit Bo. But Aww. I think we want to take Bo with us to the the, the uh, RV. We are staying right on the grounds there, so he can be in the RV. I have my Waggle uh, pet monitor, which will always tell me how, uh, you know, Shirley, how the Surely we'll be in is. touch with you because um, <laughs> yeah. that sounds very nice not to have to worry about Bo. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I, you're gonna have to be very fluid, Shirley. Well, well, Shirley's <laughs> offered this before. This isn't yeah. out of the blue. We and met now Shirley we've before. thrown in this complication yeah. of our health. Yeah, yeah. So health, um, but but we'll get we'll circle back, Shirley, when we know what we're doing because <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. Inca Schultz. Okay, wondering if you know about the National RV Training Academy. They have both RV owner home study courses as well as RV technician certification courses. Any feedback on this? I believe this This is the group that's uh, based in Texas. And I can't remember the guy who founded it, but I've met him several times. I think I've had him on the podcast. A great group. Lots of people uh, are doing this. More and more RV technicians are needed. Uh, it's a great, uh, you know, if I was, if I had mechanical skills, I would, I would become a mobile RV tech. There is a huge demand for that. Uh, and uh, these guys kind of know everything, but go get your training there. That's excellent. Great, great group. I think this is the one that's based in Texas. So, but they may have other uh, services. I think you can study at home as well, but uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, I've, I've met him and good people, quality people. Stephanie M. Where is the best place to look for RV loans? How long to finance? Can it still be used as a second home deduction? I believe it can. Talk to your accountant. Uh, RV loans. I I I used to um, I used to keep track of some of those, but the industry is a little. I don't know. Uh, it's just a, some of it. This is still. I don't. I can't recommend anybody for loans. I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to say any more, uh, but but talk to your accountant on that. I believe it is deductible. Life down the road. Great name. Thank you for purchasing our uh, keys guide. You got my new book and the guide to the keys. So awesome. Thank you. Thank and you. Thank you for wishing us to get well fast. Sharon Childress. When you camp in someone's driveway, do you have an actual heavy duty RV extension cord? or just an extension cord used for outside use? Good question. That's you, an excellent question. Want, Everybody listen up. You, you want at least a 20 amp extension cord. The little normal ones that you use don't can't carry enough current and they get too hot. So you want to have a, a 20 amp extension cord. I actually bought 20 amps and 30 amps. 30 amps are about that big around. That's just too big. And heavy, too heavy, very heavy. Uh, but twenty amps, and then you still have to use the one that, you know, the main extension cord you use for your thirty amp supply. You got to have a little, uh, a little adapter for it to go in the, uh, into the, uh, into the other, uh, into the plug, into the twenty amp thing. But use a heavy duty twenty amp extension cord minimum, and, uh, and that's all. But don't use just a regular extension cord. Lindy Rollins. I just started a two month trip and forgot to pack some stuff. Not the sleeping bags. Ha ha. <laughs> do you use a list? Uh, we do. We have a list that we give away to people who subscribe to our newsletter. And uh, um, you should have gotten one. Did you do you subscribe to our newsletter? If you do, you get an instant download of it. We have a packing list. Uh, I don't think I can bring it up real quick. I was going to see if I had it on my screen. And, uh, and it's the kind of thing you can just print out for every trip and there's some room to write your own things on it. And when you subscribe to our, our uh, mailing list, which the mail, the newsletter goes out tomorrow morning, uh, it, uh, you get a free download of it. Um, my, my downfall, I was going to be ready this year, not to forget sleeping bags. We have we a great that. big, we have done that great big towel <laughs> she on top of I the think. beds because of both sleeping up there. And I, brought the sheets for the insert in the sleeping bags and didn't do that. I thought I'll do it at the campground and then discovered I had brought the sleeping bags in because I have allergies and I don't like things getting dusty. Yep. So I forgot to put them back out. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Porter Porter. Have you been to Ireland? 
No, not been to Ireland. Would I've love been to go everywhere there. else, but not there. I'd love to go to Ireland. Right, Scotland. I'd love to go RVing in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I th uh, the bike rides really sound yeah. like fun. Yeah. Where you go from We spot can never to travel spot. again. That would be a that would be on our list. That's a great one. Robin Ostermeyer. Hello from a Harvest House Moon Pie Farm no Creamery way. in Cottondale, Florida. No way. There is a Moon Pie Farm Creamery. Oh, I, I have put that got on your bucket to stay list. There. You put that right that down. Oh my gosh, Robin. I want a Moon Pie Farm. Uh, Where's Cottondale? Do you know where Cottondale is? I don't is? know where Cotton. I think it's northern Florida. I don't hmm. know. Uh I don't know. I will. Uh, I want to look that up. I just want to say we stayed there. Mike Wendland reporting from the Moon Pie Farm <laughs> Creamery in Cottondale, Florida. Most people Florida. would not know what a Moon Pie is. Yeah. Uh, what a great name. Uh, and uh, have a great time. Hope the weather's good. Deb Castell. All right. We've got a big hello there. And uh, did you make Jen some turkey stew? I mm. made chicken noodle soup. She made chicken noodle soup Actually, the day she tested positive Thursday. And you made... Turkey stew the week couple, before. Yeah, a couple of days before I made a bunch of little containers. Did you know yeah. you were getting sick when you made the no. turkey stew? No. no. Oh, that's for us to take out. That was good. We were going to take yeah. that up the UP. Yeah. Just she doesn't seem very sick, does she? Well, it hits me. Yeah. Yep. Um, Nancy Mezzi. Okay. We are new to RV life and just bought a used Airstream Interstate. Wow. Congratulations. Yes. They're hard to find. When we are camping a few uh, miles from town, what is the best way to travel back and forth from the campsite? If there is no public transportation, do you unhook your RV to get around? We do. We do. Just unhook. You know, it's just a matter. Of and uh, in the Airstream, just push the button and your levelers will come up and then drive off. Yeah. Otherwise, and, uh, you're going to have a long walk. Yeah. I, I, I mentioned this earlier e tonight. And a couple of times we've hinted it before. On our next RV, um, we may want to go back to this Sprinter chassis or a bigger Ford chassis where we can actually tow um, a, a vehicle with us. Because we're at the point where, particularly like now, we're going to be camping on our own property in Tennessee. It'd be nice not to have to unhook and leave the property uh, and just drive off. So we have a car, an Equinox, that uh, an older model that it's not real old, but it's I think it's seventeen. It's getting old. Yeah, it is. We've had it, um, and we could use that. We could tow that. So, and then we're going to be really big. We might as well get an A. We're going to well, have the car. And well, <laughs> no. Going to be a. I like those small A's, those short A's. I know. There's, there's twenty-seven they're feet. There's, they're, not bad. they're nice. I could work in those. Really, much more comfortable. Um, uh, so, just unhook. Nancy, it's, it's no big deal. It'll take you two minutes. Uh, the, the rule is put things back. You get something out, put it back. Get it out, put it back. Yep. And yep. I'm not good at decorating because I don't want to put it back. Hey, Richard Pura, who's Aww. one of our winter camp out guys. Richard, we still may go. And if you would spread the word, I'll try and write this. We have a closed Facebook group for all the campers. Um, recall, we're going to keep our spot. We're not going to cancel it. Richard missed last year. Yeah, you you couldn't come last year. He was. Yeah, I think yeah. you were recovering from surgery, was it? Yeah, he was having some issues, and now this year it's my issue. Yeah. I hope you don't get the issue of uh, COVID. Well, Bo, if Bo hears about this, it's gonna uh, be, Bo's going to be really mad. So we, if uh, if I don't test positive, I, I'm going to get tested tomorrow, and Jen can. I said you could go, but you have to take Bo. I'd take. Oh, I'd take Bo. I would take Bo. Um, but I have some property I want to look at on the way I up there. Know. I know. I told our kids you probably buy property every 10 feet. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, we want to, uh, Richard, I should talk to you because you yes. can go check out a couple of these places for us while we're out there. Uh, I hope we see you because we do enjoy that winter camp out. It's one of the highlights of our year. Richard Schwartz any, or Christopher Schwartz. Any uh, generator security box that you might recommend for the back of the class B? A security box. Um, well, you know, there are all sorts of things you can put on the hitch, different boxes, and then you just uh, put the generator in the middle of that. I would go to a machine shop or a welding shop, give them the dimensions, and say, what, did you, what could you guys whip up? And I bet they could whip you up a box, a custom box to fit your generator that you could mount on the hitch, much cheaper than any commercial product that you buy. Uh and it's, you know, uh, something you could take on and off the hitch. Um, that, that would be my suggestion. Go to, a, go to a local welding shop, ask around, 
If you're on Facebook, go on your Facebook community and say, anybody know of a good welding shop that can do a little custom work? Um, that's what I would do. And uh, would you do me a favor? Because somebody's going to be interested in that. Uh, let me know what you find out. If you do that, take some pictures and we'll, we'll share them. Diana Schaefer. What are your thoughts on the 12 volt refrigerator? Do they use a lot of battery power? Um, not as much as you would think, but yes, they do. You know, I would pick a refrigerator that is three way that when you're plugged into uh, shore power, it works off of shore power. When you are driving or boondocking, it works off of uh, either it works off of propane LP and when you uh, or it will work off of battery power as well. Um, you can get a 12 volt, but I, I prefer, um, you know, I, I, we like having LP that we run it off instead of, you know, sucking down the battery and then ensure power it's, it's fine. Uh, but go for it. They do use power. Uh, I've heard some say that they don't cool as well. Um, I don't know that that's true. I've not had just a pure 12 volt refrigerator. Uh, I like, like I said, I like the three way. So. There you go. Greg Merwin. Hey, Greg. And happy new year to you as well. And thank you. May you not get this if you haven't already had this. Uh, Regarding the towing vehicle. We just purchased the new Ford Maverick hybrid to tow behind our Unity LTV. The hybrid is uh, built to flat tow. That sounds like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, way to go. Yeah, Richard or Greg, I know you're looking for property uh, somewhere in Georgia, I think, that to find. And uh, they just got a brand new Unity LTV. We'd love mm. to see it. Uh, I'd love to hear your your uh, opinions on it. But, you know, I don't know. It's hard to find any RV right now. So and we're we're not we love what we have. We really do. So these are all someday, maybe down the road. More important to me is to get another piece of property. You. I want the property. Oh, he's the next obsessed. Time. Oh, it's so much fun. So much fun. McDillies. Hi there. And thank you for congratulations, congratulations oh, yeah. on the 150. We hit the 150,000 subscriber token on YouTube. Thank you guys for doing that. That is awesome. Hey, can I make a couple of other, I, I mentioned at the beginning, but I wanted to tell everybody that we have a new book out. We This is our brand new book for the year. We've got, we just had a meeting that we have three or four that are in the works, but, uh, a new one came out and this one is, uh, and we think it's really important because this is going to be a year unlike any other year. You thought 2020 and 2021 were crazy and getting camping spots. This is going to be worse than 2022. Uh, it's going to be really hard to get a spot that you want unless you've reserved it six months, a year in advance. So we have put together a guide that is jam packed with resources and links on how to find free or very cheap, RV camp spots uh, using public lands and some of the other places that we have picked up over the last uh, uh, 11 years of doing this, starting our 11th year. Uh, it's seven bucks, just like all of our other books, instant download, and it's available tonight. When, first night, it's a, we've announced it. Just go to uh, this, uh, this URL, rvlifestyle.com slash free camping, and, uh, and let us know. We've got a book on boondocking, which will help. But uh, we're really excited about this new book. So it's 33 pages uh, and it's jam packed with resources and links and uh, all current. We think that it will really help you as you uh, as you plan. So you don't get stuck and, and find yourself going, well, where are we going to camp this weekend? Uh, so um, check that out. We're really excited about it. Uh, also, I want to announce another announcement we made was our contest. We're giving away two really if you have a pet. Listen up. Uh, we we gave these away in the late summer. It was very popular, and we're going to do it again now, start the year. Our friends at Waggle. Waggle has two products that are great. We're giving away one of each. The first is a pet monitor. It plugs into uh, an AC outlet on your RV, and it takes very little juice. It works on the cellular network, and once you've plugged it in and set up your account, it will send the temperature inside the RV. You can call it up on demand on your smartphone, but it's really great because you can program it so that if the temperature gets above, say, 85, you'll get an alert, beep, 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 and right away, 
and you can go back and make sure that uh, why the air conditioner went off and, and uh, start the generator if you have to. But if you keep a pet in your RV, it gives you great peace of mind. We've had that for years and love it, especially, in, you know, obviously in the summer. That's product number one. Product number two is the Waggle Cam, which uh, solves another problem. It is a, a camera that is uh, that you can call up and, and look inside live video of your pet in the RV. But the thing that makes the Waggle Cam really fun is you can load it with treats so that you can give your dog a treat every now and then. And uh, it's, it's really cool. You push a button and it boom, it spits out a treat. See dogs smart, learn about see it. See how smart the dogs are. If any of them can figure out how to give themselves a treat. Yeah, well, they got to get a smartphone. So they're oh, not that okay. smart. They just can't push a button. You no. have to push a button. There's no button on nope. the little machine. No. Nope. Okay. No. Nope. So uh, and then um, we are doing a... Um, a travel survey. Uh, we've talked about meetups. We love to have meetups. We're doing one at Tampa for our followers. We just did a camp out in, uh, on the Mississippi river, but uh, we hear from you all the time. When's the next meetup? When can we do a camp out? We have, um, have been approached by this really awesome travel company that specializes in, in really nice travel uh, gathers and they will do some, specifically for us that we can customize however we want. Uh, so if you go to that address, take a survey, it'll give us an idea of what people are interested in. Now, when you go to it, you're going to see, you know, all these European, we can go anywhere internationally, but you got to scroll down and you'll see uh, North American trips, uh, you know, the Canadian Rockies, Yellowstone, Yosemite, uh, Glacier, the Tetons, uh, out East. And we'll see how many people are interested in any of those things. And we'll put together a couple of trip offerings and see if people are, are interested in what Jen and I would go. We'll do some <laughs> teaching. We'll teach, have a couple of seminars. We'll hang out. We'll have guys. We're, we're, this could be really a lot of fun for 2022. So um, check that out and uh, fill out that survey. And uh, we'll, we'll let you know as we get the results back from it. But we would like to kind of organize something for fall. And so we got to get those results in fairly quickly. All right, let's do three more questions if we have them. And then we'll be that Wait, You had something you wanted to say? No, I just saw a question that I liked. What was it? It was from Nancy. Do you ever use your drone to check out the top of your RV? Well, well Nancy is one of our, uh, our supporters. Uh, she's a, a Facebook supporter. And uh, we haven't talked about Facebook supporters. We have Facebook supporters, YouTube members. You guys can learn about that uh, elsewhere. But Nancy asks, have you ever used your drone to look at the roof? Uh, I think that's a great use of your drone. Yeah, you I have. Borrow somebody's just to look at your house and your yard and anything you want a bird's eye view of. Yeah, I have. I have looked at it. Uh, and it's kind of fun. I like, whenever I go someplace, I like to send the drone up and then look all the way around and see what where we are. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. I did that. That's always fun. All right. Uh, so that was, I won't count that one. Question one of the three before we close. Robin? Everyone likes to leave the camper door open. Do they uh, make a lock for the screen door so no one can just walk right in? What a great question. I think we've had that question before. And the answer that is, is no. I think you have to add one yourself. It's probably not too difficult to do. I uh, thought we had a lock on it. Maybe that know. was the metal door, not the screen. We have a lock on the main door, but yeah. I don't think we do on this screen. Uh, some think, of them I may. Bet, I, bet, I, bet, I bet Airstream is locked. I bet they could just give yeah. it a pop. I mean, you can do that open. with a regular screen. Then I don't they know. could meet our dog, Mo. Yeah. Question two, Jeffrey Cosmos. Are there service centers to set up your RVs so you can tow? Uh, what's required to make your RV okay to tow? Well, you got to be able to have enough, uh, handle enough weight to tow. So you need to look at your manual. that will tell you whether you can. Then you need uh, a towing system. And there are a number of different companies that will that have the gear that you put in the hitch at the back of your RV. And then they got to uh, attach some stuff to the front end of your, of your tow vehicle. Uh, your tow vehicle has to be able to tow four wheels down. Uh, and um, you've got to have the brakes set up and all of that. So... Yes, uh, there are service centers. Uh, you would you would go to you know, a camping world or a local RV dealer. You you they'll tell you what you need, or you can just search on the internet. But yeah, they'll install it for you. And uh, when you do, make sure they all give you a really good demonstration on how you hook up the car. 
uh, and uh, you'll be you'll be glad. All right, last question of the night. We've gone. I want to go watch that uh, uh, episode, uh, the final episode of season four. Of Maybe Yellowstone. that was the last question um, of the night. Yep. So oh, I think we're done. Is that the last question? No more questions. It looks like it. Well, come on. Looks like it to me. Um, any, any. All right, let's let's find a comment. We got to end with somebody. Um, you looking over there? Oh, well, there's a couple of them. <laughs> okay, last one. Svengato says, "Use my drone to chase snakes." Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I say about snake? There's only one kind of snake <laughs> oh, that's no, good. Michael, stop it. Some people <laughs> yeah. like snakes. Uh, weird people like snakes. I'm sorry. <laughs> and don't tell me, oh, they do a very good ecological job. Not in my book. Hey, Steve Egbert became a YouTube member. Thank you, Steve, for your support. That means a lot to us. You're the first new one, I think, that we've announced in 2022. So pat yourself in the back. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, thank you guys so much for a really fun. Uh, hundreds of you watch this live. And by the time it's done tomorrow, uh, there'll be more. If you have not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. Thank you over on YouTube, Chris Cowley, for uh, Heard and Ride and Heard tonight. Thank you, Phyllis, for the questions. And I know we don't get to all of your questions. Um, Phyllis and, and, uh, and Chris help run the questions for us. We try to pick questions that have a general interest, but we always miss some. And I'm sorry, it, you know, it's just the nature with hundreds on there. We can't get to all of them. Uh, we go back and we try and read as many of them as we can. Uh, one way for sure to get your question asked is if you do a video version of it, ask us. And then email it to us at Mike and Jen at rvlifestyle.com. And then I, I can play your video one on the podcast that goes out every Monday, every Wednesday, and we'll answer your questions there. So send us a video version. That's our email address. Can I answer a question? You can answer a question. Okay. Question. Well, I have allergies to smoke. A lot of people have allergies to smoke. Oh. It's RV home. We have a smokeless campfire that we can take, but sometimes we can't camp in a campground because the campground is just filled with smoke. You ever gone to a campground? That's why we boondock so much. And it's just nothing but smoke. And I mean, like we got our grandkids that can't be around the smoke. You know, sometimes we can't camp. A we just did a we just did a video on the best camp uh, fire uh, containers, I guess, uh, on the blog rvlifestyle.com. We've used one called Pyroad. Pyroad. We did a video on that. But for Christmas, I got a new one, um, Solo Stove, I think is what it's called. And I'll do a review on that. I'm really excited about that. It's a high-end, really cool, pretty much smokeless. We're going to use that on our property in Tennessee. Yeah, but, I, I, I don't do well with smoke. Yep. And I know a lot of other people don't either. Yep. And uh, back to that towing thing, Johnny Lightning notes that towing is a $2,000 to $4,000 proposition uh, depending on uh, whether or not you do it yourself. Uh, yeah, it's expensive. To, you know, I mean, they're talking, you need some heavy duty equipment for that. So, yep. And then uh, you can be yeah. a professional truck driver. <laughs> you don't need, now people are going to think you need a license, but you oh. don't, you don't. Okay. I'm all done with all of this. You guys have been Stay great. Stay healthy, everybody. Uh, we'll, uh, again, uh, for those of you who are planning to meet us on the Upper Peninsula, the event is still on. We just don't know because of health whether we're going to be there. And we don't want to give this to anybody. We don't want to be. Nope. Because you're contagious two days before you know you are. Yep. Uh, so Jennifer was uh, tested positive Thursday. Tomorrow is day five. And uh, according to everything we've heard, she should start, uh, should not be contagious in a couple more days. Uh, I have not gotten it yet. Or I had it early and, and I just didn't it. know it. So that's the question. Um but we're going to be safe and and probably not go to the UP thing unless we're sure that it's okay. So, uh, but we are planning on Tampa. All right, enough talking. I got to get and watch Yellowstone. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Happy trails.